హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ఫిజిక్స్ వాలా సో ఇన్ ద కంటిన్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ద సమరీ సిరీస్ టుడే వే గోయింగ్ టు కవర్ ద నెక్స్ట్ టాపిక్ దట్ ఈస్ త్రీ డైమెన్షనల్ జామెట్రీ సో యు నో వీ కంప్లీటెడ్ వెక్టర్స్ అండ్ వెక్టర్స్ అండ్ త్రీ డి జామెట్రీ ఆర్ బోత్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఇంటర్లింక్డ్ దట్ మీన్స్ సెవరల్ కాన్సెప్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ వెక్టర్స్ can be compared with 3d as well as 3d with vectors and let's say if you uh, if you if you didn't understand the vector question just transform that to 3d geometry relate and solve accordingly or in the vice versa right so three dimensional geometry is also very important and we have different uh, equations in this to remember right so let's begin today's class first of all so we'll be having the discussion of some summary and then some problems again summary and then problems like that okay right so so what is this chapter all about people you know that what is this a three dimensional geometry till now we have discussed about 2d geometry that means uh, x and y axis and all our pre previous classes we just discussed in two dimensional so only x and y coordinates are there but now we are moving into space till the last 2d geometry we are in the plane okay whatever we are talking we are talking with re with reference to plane but now whatever we are talking we are talking with respect to space and in space we have different planes different axes and now we are we are talking about the three axes x axis y axis and z axis so comparatively uh, relatively we'll be getting uh, different planes like x y plane y z plane and x z plane okay and whenever we are plotting a point definitely we'll be getting three coordinates x y z okay some basic of 3d geometry right so now when we are talking about uh, for example in a 2d geometry we have something called slope of a line so what is the slope of a line so it says how the line is oriented or or what is the orientation or what is the angle between x axis to that line or y axis to that line right we can come to some conclusion on how the line is oriented towards the axis but now in 3d geometry as we are having three different axes we cannot directly say something called a slope because now we are having three different x y and z axis so for that we will talk about in terms of cosines okay directional cosines okay so directional cosines will give a rough idea of how the line is oriented with different axes okay right so if a and b are two points given on line l then the directional cosines of vectors ab and ba are the directional cosines okay directional cosines are dc's of line okay the directional cosines of the line joining a and b is the nothing but dc's of the line so dc's of line means it is very clear that dc's for a line will always be constant take any two points on the line find dc's it will be constant throughout the throughout the line they might just differ in positive or negative which tells us the direction okay right so so what is the relation we are having people the so line space has two sets of dcs plus or minus cos alpha plus or minus cos beta and plus or minus cos gamma and what are this alpha beta gamma these are the angles made with x axis y axis and z axis okay so alpha beta gamma are the directional angles which line l makes with positive direction of x y z axis respectively okay so we'll be having directional cosines cos alpha cos beta cos gamma or minus cos alpha minus cos beta minus cos gamma if you're keeping negative keep it for all okay don't keep positive cos alpha or negative cos beta positive cos gamma no keep positive for all or keep negative for all so we'll be having two sets of dcs for a line okay two sets of dcs okay and the relation between those directional cosines if l is cos alpha m is cos beta and n is cos gamma l square plus m square plus n square will be equal to 1 l square plus m square plus n square will be equal to 1 that is the relation for a, a cosines directional cosines and when we convert the same thing into sin sin square alpha plus sin square plus beta plus sin square gamma is equal to 2 right you know sin square plus cos square is equal to 1 okay and what about the directional cosines when you have two points See, when you have two points okay so x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus z1 if you look into the vectors that will directly give the vector vector uh, what we saying the coordinates right the ab vector coordinates is x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus z1 the same thing will become directional ratios which we will cover later in the next slides directional ratios divided by its magnitude divided by its length divided by its length ab 
will be getting its directional cosines x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 z2 minus z1 divided by its the length of the segment ab the length of the segment ab okay and the distance between two points the same thing which we already learned in 2d geometry with just an extension of z coordinate root over x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square clear okay next so the same thing again once again we're having so l is equal whenever we have the points okay so now le let any three numbers a b c which are proportional to this is proportional means into two into three into whatever number it is okay so that proportions when we take as a b c that are the proportions of dc's we're taking it as a b c then the a b c are called the directional ratios that those proportions okay are called as directional ratios and again we have a relation for directional ratios that is the l is equal plus or minus a by root a square plus b square plus c square see a b c are directional ratios directional ratios divided by its magnitude divided by root a square plus b square plus c square that will give you directional cosines that will give you directional cosines okay l m n right for any particular value for example you got two three four as directional ratios what are dc's so dc's will be 2 by plus or minus 2 by root over 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square comma 3 by the same root over and 4 by the same root over so this will give you directional cosines and there are two sets of directional cosines with plus or minus don't forget that there are two sets of directional cosines with plus or minus okay and what about the next the direction ratios of a line joining two points so when we talk about directional ratios no need to divide with magnitude it is simply x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 and z2 minus z1 no need to divide with its length of that segment okay right so directional ratios are sometimes called as directional numbers direction ratios sometimes called as direction numbers nothing more than that next so uh, some proof uh, we'll look into that later if time permits so l square plus m square plus n square is equal to one so you know that everyone okay so lmn are the different um cosines cosines of angle that means cos alpha you see here cos alpha will be uh oa oa by r this is r ops r so oa by r okay o x by r so in the same way you, you try to bring cos beta as well as cos gamma just add of add all of them you'll get your result okay again the distance between two points Right. So between two points and section formula, you know that that is internal division, external division. So what is that? When we have two points A and B, and if you want to find a point P which divides in the ratio M is to N, you, you can use that section formula. But not always a point will be on the line segment AB. That may be in the exterior region as well. Okay. So to get this P, we need to use external division formula. That is m x two minus x n x one by minus n comma m y two minus n y one by minus n comma m z two minus n z one by minus n. Understood? Clear, everyone? Okay. Right. Next, if a line has direction ratios two minus one minus two, then what are its directional cosines? Just now we we saw that. Okay. That is first of all find what is that root over a square plus b square plus c square. So a is two, b is minus one, c is minus two. So a square plus b square plus c square root over a square plus b square plus c square is root over 4 plus 1 plus 4 4 4 8 8 plus 1 9 so root 9 is 3 units root 9 is 3 units understood clear everyone okay fine so the direction raised direction cosines okay for getting direction cosines plus or minus okay so 2 by 3 comma minus 1 will be as it is minus 1 come by 3 comma minus 2 by 3 so you have two sets one 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3 minus 2 by 3 or or with a negative with a negative so that becomes minus 2 by 3 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 okay so that will give you the directional cosines directional cosines okay all right next one a line passes through the point with position vectors 2i minus 3j plus 4k and makes angles see vectors linked with 3d geometry okay so line passes through the point with position vector that means simply we can say the point itself as 2 minus 3 4 okay the point itself is 2 minus 3 4 and makes angle 60 120 45 that means this is alpha this is beta and this is gamma okay find the equation of line in the cartesian form so we have a point we have its directional cosines 
ok. So, what will be the equation for this tell me how to write the equation for this. All right. So, we have discussed same thing in vectors if you remember. So, the equation will be something like this ok x minus x 1 by l 1 l 1 means it is directional cosines or if you have directional ratios you can use that same thing directly ok is equal to y minus y 1 by uh, or l m and z minus z 1 by n ok. So, it is l m and n right. So, what is the point? So, we have x minus 2 by l what is l? Uh, L is cos 60, cos 60, cos 60 is equal to y minus minus 3. So, y plus 3 by cos 120, cos 120 is equal to z minus 4 by n and is cos 45 and is a cos 45, right. So, x minus 2 by cos 60, what is cos 60? Cos 60 is 1 by 2, 1 by 2 is equal to y plus 3 by cos 120, cos 120 is cos 180 minus 60 minus cos 60. So, minus 1 by 2 again that is equal z minus 4 by cos 45 is 1 by root 2 ok. So, just do all the reciprocals you will be done with your answer all right. So, yes that that is it equation is in this format only for 3 dimensional geometry no need to again bring into another formats ok right next. So, equation of line passing through 2 given points ok. So, consider the 2 given points as x 1 y 1 z 1 x 2 y 2 z 2 with position vectors a bar and b bar respectively position vectors ok. So, also assume r bar is the position vector of any arbitrary point on the line passing through a and b. So, what we get here? What is the equation of line that we will get here? This equation of line passing through two points, ok. So, yeah, this is a since the points one second, since the points a, b and p all lie on the same line, which means that they are all collinear, right. So, when we have two points a, b and when we are taking the general point p, when we are taking general point p. So, all these are collinear. So, when they are collinear we can say a p is equal to lambda times of a b. We can say a p bar is equal to lambda times of a b bar right. So, from there the vector equation whatever we want is r bar is equal to a bar plus lambda times of b bar minus a bar right ok. So, what is a p? a p p is r vector r bar position vector p is r ok. So, a p is r bar minus a bar o p minus o a and lambda times of a b means o b minus o a. So, that will give you b bar minus a bar. So, this is the vector equation of a line passing through two points r equal to a bar plus lambda times of b bar minus a bar ok right. <coughs> so, for that if you see the Cartesian equation ok. So, in place of r we keep with x y z x i y z y z z k and a bar is the first point x 1 y 1 z 1 b bar minus a bar is x 2 minus x 1 y 2 minus y 1 z 2 minus z 1 ok. So, now on comparing the coefficients and equating the lambda trying to bring lambda. So, we get this equation this is the equation of line passing through two different points x 1 y 1 x 1 y 1 z 1 and x 2 y 2 z 2 ok. This same thing x 2 minus x 1 y 2 minus y 1 z 2 minus z 1 are nothing but the directional ratios. If directional cosines are given use the same thing because they are only proportional to each other. You can use the LMN in the denominator or use ABC or this value is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z1, ok. All the, all the, all three will give you the same answer at the end, <coughs> right. So, when DRs or DCs of the two lines are given. So, now we are having DCs and DRs of both the lines. Now, we need to find angle between two lines. We need to find angle between two lines, ok. So, for that what we do? The same thing the, um, what is that dot plot formula? dot product b 1 dot b 2 is equal to mod b 1 mod b 2 cos theta. So, from there we will get cos theta is equal to a 1 a 2 plus b 1 b 2 plus c 1 c 2 by root a 1 square plus b 1 square plus c 1 square root a 2 square plus b 2 square plus c 2 square the same formula that we use there also. But here as we talk about the angle between lines it is always acute we will only take the value between 0 to 90. So, that is the reason we keep modulus ok. We keep modulus we do not take any value between 90 to 180 90 to 180 no obtuse angle will come here ok. So, <coughs> Right. So, from there if you try to bring sin eta, you have sin square plus cos square equal to 1. So, from there you can also try to bring sin, sin eta, but we do not use that much often. So, cos eta is well enough, ok. And when vector equations of two lines are given, so when two vector equation of two lines are given, right, r1 equal a1 plus lambda b1 and r2 equal lambda a2 plus mu b2. So, this is the point a1, this is the point a2, ok. <coughs> so, what is this? 
This is the equation of line passing through A1 and parallel to B1. This is the vector equation of line passing through A1 and parallel to B1. This is all the same. Passing through A2 and parallel to B2. Okay. So, in that case, so B1, B2 will be the vectors we need. So, cos theta is equal to B1 dot B2 by mod B1 mod B2 completely with modulus to bring the answer as positive. Okay. And the same for that Cartesian equations. Okay. So, the angle between them will again give you the same formula. For two perpendicular lines, we know dot product equal to 0. In the same way, A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equal to 0. If we have directional cosines, L1, L2 plus M1, M2 plus N1, N2 will be equal to 0. And for two parallel lines, like uh, <coughs> A1 by B1 equal to A2 by B2 equal to uh, A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. Okay. Proportion of uh, all those, L1 by L2 is equal to M1 by M2 is equal to N1 by N2. Clear, everyone? Right. What is the next one we are having? So, equation of a line in space passing through a given point and parallel to a given vector. Okay. So, passing through a given point and parallel, passing through a given point and parallel to another vector. So, this is the same thing. Uh, we need to keep this at the starting, but we forgot to keep that. So, R bar is equal to A bar plus lambda B bar. R bar is equal to A bar plus lambda B bar. Okay. Next so, parametric equations, if drs of the lines are ABC, then by using R bar equal A bar plus lambda B bar, so we will be getting all the different points, okay. So, coordinates of any point on the line is given by X1 plus lambda A, Y1 plus lambda B, Z1 plus lambda C. All right, people. <clears throat> Next. Cartesian equation of a line. So, if we eliminate the parameter lambda, we get this equation X minus X1 by A is equal to Y minus Y1 by B is equal to Z minus Z1 by C, where ABC are the directional ratios, okay. Right. The same thing if we have directional cosines. Okay. Skew lines, two straight lines in space which are neither parallel, neither parallel nor intersecting. Okay. They lie in different planes and are non copular which are neither parallel nor intersecting. Okay. And line of shorter distances, there exists a unique line perpendicular to each of the skew lines L1 and L2 and this line is known as the line of the shortest distance. Okay. Right. Right. If, the, if the lines are perpendicular to each other, then the value of P. People given that these two lines are perpendicular to each other. So, what we know when they are perpendicular, A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equal to 0 or L1, L2 plus M1, M2 plus N1, N2 is equal to 0. So, please do that. What is A, B, C? What is A1, B1, C1? What is A2, B2, C2? Please do that fast, quick, everyone. Right. So, tell me, what is the relation if this is A1, B1, C1, A1, B1, C1, we have A2, B2, C2. So, the relation is A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 should be equal to 0 because they are perpendicular. You can see in another way that the dot product will be 0, right? The same condition will come there also. So, A1, A2 minus 2 into 4P is minus 8P plus 3P into 2 is plus 6P plus 4 into 7 is minus 28 is equal to 0. So, minus 2p is equal to 28. So, p is equal to minus 28 by 2, which is which will give you minus 14. The value of p for which these two lines are perpendicular will be minus 14. Okay, once again cross check that if there is any calculation mistakes. Got it people? Next. <clears throat> Find the directional cosines of the line 4 minus x by 2 is equal to y by 6 equal to 1 minus z by 3. So, one thing you need to understand, you cannot directly find for 2, 6, 3. Because in the numerator, if you carefully observe, there is negatives, I mean, minus x minus z. That is not at all the proper format. That is not the proper format. So, this becomes x minus 4 by minus 2 is equal to y by 6 will be the same. And this z minus 1 by minus 3. Right. So, for minus 2, 6, mi minus 2, 6, minus 3, you need to find dc. Okay. So, uh, minus 2, 6, minus 3. So, what is root over? 2 square 4 plus 6 square 36 plus 3 square 9. How much is that? 36 plus 13, 49, right? 36 plus 13 is uh, root 49. Root 49 is 7, okay? So, the directional cosines, directional cosines will be equal to my, uh, plus or minus minus 2 by 7, comma 6 by 7, comma minus 3 by 7. So, with positives, one answer. With negative, one answer. So, we will be getting two directional cosines. 
Remember, people, for every line, you'll be having two directional cosines with or with uh, uh, which differ in positive negatives. But there are infinite directional ratios because for directional ratios, you multiply with anything. You multiply this with directional cosines with any number. Multiply with two, three, four, one by two, one by five, whatever it is. Just multiply. Everything becomes directional ratios. Okay. Nice. Next. Find the vector equation of the line passing through the point 1, 2, minus 1 and parallel to the line 5x equal 25 is equal to 14 minus 7y is equal 35z. So please try to understand what is the pattern, what is the meaning of this, right? And from there, find the vector equation. So I'll give you two minutes of time, people. Please do that quick. All right. It's not 5x equal to, sorry, there is a printing mistake, 5x minus, okay? 5x minus. So this this one term, this one term, this one term. Right. All right, see. see, first of all, okay, we have the point, fine, but what is the parallel? So, when they're parallel, the directional cosines will be the same. Directional cosines will be the same. And to get directional cosines, the equation should be in the standard format like x minus x1 by L1 or whatever it is, M, A, B, C, or whatever it is, okay? So, it's only x, not 2x, not 3x, nothing. It's only x. So, we need to convert this first of all. So, 5x minus 2, 5 means... Uh, uh, 5 times of x minus 5, right, is equal to, here you can take minus 7 common, if you take minus 7 common, it becomes a y minus 2, is equal to 35 times of z, right? So, now what do you do? Divide with, uh, divide with 35, or, divide, or bring this 5 directly down, set, okay? That will give you x minus 5 by 1 by 5, is equal to y minus 2 by minus 1 by 7, right is equal to z by 1 by 35 right so this becomes lmn or any any uh, proportion of that becomes directional ratios also right so lmn will be equal to 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 1 by 35 i'm just multiplying with uh, 35 completely so if i multiply with completely i will get abc directional ratios okay I'm just doing that to avoid that uh, fractions. So I multiply with 35. 35 by 5 is 7. 35 by minus 7 is minus 5. 35 by 35 is 1. So this is the DRCBC. Okay. Now find the vector equation of the line passing through and parallel to and parallel. So we got that parallel vector. This is a parallel vector. Okay. So passing through. So R bar is equal to A bar plus plus lambda times of B bar. That is the equation. Not T. T times of B bar. So what is A is the point. That is, R bar is equal to I plus 2J minus K plus lambda times of B bar. B bar is this uh, ABC. 7I, 7I minus 5J plus K. 7I minus 5J plus K. Understood, people, everyone? Got it? Yes or no? Not at all difficult question. Unless and until you understand the question, 
these questions are not difficult i'm saying again okay all right next a line passing through the point a with position vector a bar equal to 4 2 2 okay the a point a is 4 2 2 is a parallel to the vector okay a line passing through this is parallel to another vector b bar that is 2i plus 3j plus 6k find the length of perpendicular drawn on this line from a point p with vector r with vector r1 equal to i plus 2j plus 3k so understand the question okay so from the point a from the point a we are we are having one line okay and this line is parallel to b bar fine fine so we will get directly directional cosines directional ratios fine so from there we will get this equation of line okay then what is it? find the length of perpendicular drawn on this line from a point so from the point one two three we are drawing perpendicular to this line so we need to find this perpendicular length okay so one thing you can try to bring out what is this point how can you bring that the direction ratios of this line into direction ratios of this line perpendicular so that becomes zero okay so you can use different uh, kind different types of applications to bring that so please uh, try to do that i'll give you two minutes of time able try to understand the question try to apply in whichever way you want All right. So I'll pass some information so that you can try it on your own later. Right. As this line is parallel to B bar, so the same directional cosines will be there. What is that? Two three k. Right. Two three k. The same. Two three six. So two three six. The same directional ratios. So if I say this line as L one, what is the equation of L one? Equation of L one will be uh, we have a point x minus four by its direction ratios two is equal to z minus two by three is equal to y minus 2 by 6 direction ratios same direction ratios okay and how to get a general point in this time let's say this is p i want to find point p so i'll take this is equal to lambda okay so if that is lambda tell me one second this is lambda right so x is equal to 2 lambda plus 4 y is equal to 3 lambda plus 2 z is equal to 6 lambda plus 2 right so that becomes general point 2 lambda plus 4 comma 3 lambda plus 2 comma 6 lambda plus 2 so now i want to find this point lambda i want to find that point to get that i need to find lambda how to get lambda so the directional ratios of this line and direction ratios of these lines as they're perpendicular that a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 should be zero right so this is the line uh, direction ratios of l1 is already 236 what about direction ratios of l2 this perpendicular line okay 
so drs of l2 so you need to go for 2 lambda plus 4 minus 1 that becomes 2 lambda plus 4 minus 1 is 2 lambda plus 3 okay 3 lambda plus 2 minus 2 is 3 lambda and 6 lambda plus 2 minus 3 is 6 lambda 6 lambda minus 1 6 lambda minus 1 those are the directional ratios of l2 directional ratios of l1 we already know 2 3 6 so this product 2 times of 2 lambda plus 3 plus 3 times of 3 lambda <coughs> sorry plus 6 times of 6 lambda plus 1 should be equal to 0 so 4 lambda plus 9 lambda or uh, that is 30 uh, 30 uh, 3, 3, 3, 4 plus 9 13 13 plus 13 plus 36 uh, 49 lambda okay so 49 lambda plus 3 to 6 and 6 plus 6 is equal to 0 so find lambda and substitute it back okay so once cross check that if there is any mistake that we might have done once please check that table right so we had a small mistake here 6 lambda this minus 1 right so 6 times of 6 lambda minus 1 that is the mistake we had done right so minus 1 is equal to 0 so that is 6 lambda minus 6 is equal to 0 6 and 6 gets cancelled so lambda value will get it as 0 so if lambda is equal to 0 what is the point the point itself is nothing but 4 to 2 okay 4 to this itself is a okay this itself is a so here we will get 4 to 2 so you need to find the distance between these two points you are done the distance between two points will give you the answer okay please do that only one step after that understood everyone people not a difficult people not a difficult question just you need to understand the pattern okay find the shortest distance between the following pair of skew lines okay so to find the distance between following pair of skew lines you have a formula i will tell you that uh, but uh, you have one more formula through vectors as well see in vectors if you observe in vectors a line passes through a bar and parallel to b bar uh, passing through c bar point c bar and parallel d bar so what is the distance between these two these two are skew lines don't forget that okay I am telling the formula only for skew lines. In this reason, the, the distance, distance between two points, distance between these two will be given by C bar minus A bar and B bar D bar. So, this box by mod B cross D. Right? So, this will give you the distance with complete modulus to make that as positive. In that case, if you are talking in that way, what are ABC? What are the points ABC? Right? So, the first point, first of all, you need to convert this properly x minus 1 by 2 is equal to y minus 2 by minus 3 is equal to z plus 1 by 4 and this is x plus 2 by minus 1 is equal to y minus 3 by 2 is equal to z by 3 right so now observe that everyone see the point is 1 2 minus 1 which is nothing but in that a bar this a bar the other point is minus 2 3 0 which is nothing but c bar and what about b bar d bar b bar will be the directional ratio that is a 2 minus 3 4 and d will be the directional ratios of this minus 1 2 3 and you have the formula you can keep it okay i prefer going in this method rather than the formula with 3d geometry because that's a bit more complicated than this okay but however you can also use the formula for formula of three dimensional geometry all right people all right so so find what is c bar minus a bar right and b bar d bar box what is box box remember c bar if if box is a bar b bar c bar okay so it is you can go with a bar dot b cross c or you can also go with a cross b dot c both of them will be same okay whichever you want to go you can do that but preferably we'll go with this because in the denominator we want b cross d in the denominator we want b cross d so finding b cross d will help us in both the terms together understood right so from there you'll get the distance between the pair of lines these are skew lines and if the distance between these two lines is zero for example in any case if that distance between them is zero that means those two lines are intersecting okay so only when those two are intersecting we we don't get any distance between them understood people all right next show that the lines are equal to i plus j minus k plus lambda times of 3i minus j and r bar equal to 4i minus k plus mu times of 2i plus 3k intersect also find the point of intersection see these are two different lines for different values of lambda here and for different values of mu here we get different points on the line lambda equal to 0 one point lambda equal to 0 0.1 one another point lambda equal to 1 you'll get another point like that for different values of mu but 
when they are intersecting when they are intersecting for some value of lambda and mu these two will give you the same point right <coughs> the same x1 y1 z1 so we'll take the help of that so r bar is equal actually this is uh, if you take i this is 1 plus 3 lambda into i 1 plus 3 lambda into i plus what about the j uh, j is 1 minus lambda into j minus k right 1 minus lambda into j right plus uh, minus k and what about that r bar is equal to here 4 i so if you take i 4 plus 2 mu times of i and what about uh, j there is no j term at all oh god so if there is no j no j term it is very easy to bring the value okay no j term in this so plus k what about k this is minus 1 and this is 3 mu 3 mu minus 1 times of k right equating this you will get the value of mu and here you will get the value of lambda right so here 0 0 times of j so 1 minus lambda is equal to 0 you will get lambda is equal to 1 and uh, here 3 mu minus 1 is equal to minus 1 so 3 mu is equal to 0 you will get mu is equal to 0 substitute here and check whether these two are giving you the same answer or not okay lambda equal to 1 1 plus 1 2 i and this is the mu is 0 4 i so are we getting the same value for lambda and mu for lambda and mu we are not getting the same point so that means there is a mistake maybe some printing mistake or we have done some mistake so please cross check that once everyone please cross check that and tell me what is the mistake that we have done here it's correct man it's correct what well, see we are substituting lambda in place of mu okay 1 plus 3 into 1 so 1 plus 3 is 4 so 1 plus 3 lambda should be equal to 4 plus 2 mu only then we can say that they are intersecting or else no okay so 1 plus 3 times of lambda is 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 plus 0 so 4 is equal to 4 yes it is intersecting and how to get the point of intersection just substitute lambda here substitute mu there you will get the answer okay so mu is 0 it is simple here okay so mu is 0 you will get the point as 4i minus k that means the point is 4 0 minus 1 similarly you substitute lambda equal to 1 here you will get the same point if you substitute lambda equal to 1 i plus j minus k plus 3i minus j so j j gets cancelled so that is a 4i minus k the same thing 4 0 minus 1 so you substitute lambda here or mu there both of them will give you the same answer because we have equated those two okay right next find the shortest distance between the two lines whose vectors equations are again the same thing okay now directly in the vector equations so this is a bar plus lambda times of b bar this is c bar plus lambda mu times of d bar or you can take a1 a2 b1 b2 like that okay whatever it is so the distance between the two lines will be uh, box of or a bar dot a bar dot okay uh, sorry first what is a bar for that okay just a minute okay let's, let's move like that okay this is a bar and c bar right so box of a bar minus c bar b bar d bar by by b cross d with magnitude and modulus completely to make the answers positive okay so this is a a bar minus c bar dot dot b cross d by b cross d's dot product i mean the magnitude of that so finding b cross d how do you find b cross d okay i'm not doing this completely okay it's i'm leaving this for you but how do you find b cross d tell me so b cross d b cross d so here it is this cross this you need to go for uh cross product i j k i j k okay 1 minus 2 2 1 minus 2 2 and here it is 3 minus 2 minus 2 so you need to find this vector and the magnitude of that find the vector and the magnitude of that will give your answer clear everyone people okay so let's move forward for the next one find the equation of the perpendicular drawn from the point 2 4 minus 1 to the line also write down the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular from p to the line the same kind of question we already saw before so once again find the equation of perpendicular drawn from the point okay so <clears throat> from the point 2 4 minus 1 2 4 minus 1 we are drawing perpendicular to the line to the line this one to the line x plus 5 by 1 y plus 3 by 4 z minus 6 by 1, minus 9 that means a point on this line can be written as minus 5 minus 3 is 6 and the direction parallel to 1 4 minus 10 that dc of that okay so again same thing we can take a general point on this taking general point is equal to lambda x is equal to lambda minus 5 y is equal to 4 lambda minus 3 z equal to minus lambda plus 6 so take the general point 
perpendicular from there we'll get the values the same question we have done already previously okay all right <clears throat> we can do that so let's go for the next concept what is the next concept that we're having so plane and its equation so what is plane and its equation till now we discussed about equation of line not plane equation of line passing through one point parallel to other vector or equation of line passing through two points right so now we are moving with equation of plane so equation of a plane okay in normal unit vector form that is one form normal unit vector that means normal means perpendicular that means we are having the details of perpendicular okay so consider a plane at distance d from the origin such that o n is the normal see this is the origin even the x also there okay so here we are having the plane so from this origin we are having the perpendicular that is n cap or o n here okay o n okay is the distance is the normal form from the origin to the plane and cap is a unit vector along o n along this o n along this o n the unit vector is n cap okay then o n is equal d times of n cap what is the d d is the distance between them okay so o n will be d times of n cap okay this is d times of n cap if o n is equal d consider r be the position vector of arbitrary point x y z on the plane so we'll take one more point x y z and we'll use the dot plot concepts to get that formula okay so <clears throat> from there so vector equation vector form of the equation of plane so from there we will be getting more details right so this one r bar dot n bar is equal to d r bar dot n bar is equal to d. that is the vector equation we'll be getting okay and the same way we'll be having one more equation that is lx plus my plus nz equal to d where lmn are the directional ratios of the perpendicular okay direction cosine sorry directional cosines of the normal normal means that perpendicular lines okay this is the plane from origin we are drawing the perpendicular so for this perpendicular the directional cosines are lmn and the distance between these two is d okay and the normal vector in that is general vectors it is n cap here it is lmn okay so from there we get that equation also if ab is the directional ratios okay if ab is the directional ratios then we'll get ax plus by plus cz is equal to d that is missing there <coughs> okay so we'll get ax plus by plus cz is equal to d so a b c are the direction ratios of not the plane a b c are the direction ratios of the perpendicular or the normal we say it as a normal that is a normal the normals perpendiculars okay right so equation of plane perpendicular to a given vector and passing through a given point okay so one more vector is there before it is directly from origin before it is directly from origin origin we said there is normal now some other perpendicular line is there so for that you will be getting the equation do we have here no for that you will be getting the equation as the okay so r bar minus a bar dot m bar previously it is r bar dot n cap is equal to zero but now we are not having that normal we have some perpendicular line so that is m bar and for that point it is not origin anymore it is a point a so r bar minus a bar is a uh, is the vector okay that is one line vector right so from there we'll be getting so this equation is the same as x minus x1 y minus y1 z minus z1 and so on so this will be the cartesian form of the plane understand once again the cartesian plane of the plane passing through passing through x1 y1 z1 right and m cap be the uh, perpendicular lines okay right equation of plane passing through three non collinear points now we are having three points so for that we'll be getting the ratio uh, the lines as the equations as a2 minus a1 dot b1 cross b2 equal to 0 not this i'm sorry yeah uh, assume that the plane contains three non collinear points with the position vectors a bar b bar and c bar as well p be the any arbitrary point in the plane whose position vector is r bar okay so in this case what we do for collinearity we, we take the same help of the same kind of conditions all right equation of plane passing through three non collinear points next coplan in a coplanarity of two lines that means uh, how to find whether they are coplanar lying on the same line or not okay right all right so to find whether these two lines are lying on the same plane or not so that's the reason, that's it called coplanar okay so vector form of coplanarity of line so we need to find this relation a2 minus a1 dot b1 cross b2 is equal to 0 where the equations are given by 
ఆర్ ఏ ఆర్ ఆర్ ఈక్వల్ ఏ వన్ ప్లస్ ల్యామ్డా బి వన్ అండ్ ఆర్ టూక్వల్ బి వన్ ల్యామ్డా టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ బి వన్ ప్లస్ ఆర్ టూ ఇస్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఏ టూ ప్లస్ ల్యామ్ యూ బి టూ దీస్ ఆర్ ద టూ ఈక్వేషన్స్ టు ఫైన్ వెదర్ దోస్ టూ లైన్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ కోప్లర్ ఆర్ నాట్ విన్ టు ఫైన్ ఏ టూ మైనస్ ఏ వన్ బి వన్ బి టూ బి వన్ క్రాస్ బి టూ దట్ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో ఓకే సో దట్ ఈస్ వన్ థింగ్ నెక్స్ట్ కార్టిజన్ ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ కోప్లా అండ్ డి సో ద సేమ్ థింగ్ కార్టిజన్ ప్లేన్ కార్టిజన్ ఫార్మాట్ విల్ గెట్ దిస్ దిస్ డిటర్మినెంట్ షుడ్ బి ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో ఓకే దెన్ యూ కెన్ సే ద లైన్స్ ఆర్ కోప్లేన్ ఆర్ డిస్టెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ టూ ప్యారల్ లైన్స్ సో నౌ డిస్టెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ టూ ప్యారల్ లైన్స్ ఇన్ టూ డైమ్స్ జామెట్రీ రిమంబర్ ఇఫ్ రిమంబర్ సి వన్ మైనస్ సి టూ బై రూట్ ఏ స్క్వేర్ ప్లస్ బి స్క్వేర్ ద సేమ్ కైండ్ హియర్ ఇన్స్ ఆఫ్ సి వన్ మైనస్ సి టూ విల్ గెట్ డి వన్ మైనస్ డి టూ బై రూట్ ఏ స్క్వేర్ ప్లస్ బి స్క్వేర్ ప్లస్ సి స్క్వేర్ రైట్ ద సేమ్ ఫార్మ్లా అండ్ ఫర్ సైన్ డిటా విల్ బి గోయింగ్ బెక్టర్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్లెయిన్ బెక్టర్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఆఫ్ ప్లెయిన్ ఆర్ బార్ మైనస్ ఏ బార్ డాట్ బి క్రో బి మైనస్ ఏ క్రాస్ సి మైనస్ ఏ ఇస్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో ఓకే so cartesian form of the equation of plane it is there equation of plane in intercept form the same we learned in two, two dimensional here it is z by c is equal to one extra term right so equation of xy equation of y z equation of zx okay so we have few more formulas that you can try to revise that later okay so the plane 2x minus 3y plus 6z minus 11 equal to 0 makes an angle sin inverse alpha with x axis the value of alpha is equal to so please uh, try to think about now the angle is not with cos with uh, i mean the angle is not given in terms of cos angle is given in terms of sin okay so don't do any mistakes in that so please try that people all right see here see first of all as soon as you see this vector you need to bring some uh, bring some information that uh, 2 minus 3 or 2i minus 3j plus 6k is the normal vector that is the n, n bar or n uh, n cap okay so for now it is n bar what is that that is the normal vector normal vector and makes with x axis so x axis let's say a bar that is actually just i just i so how to find the angle between them that is already given as sin inverse alpha so angle between them we know when we have two vectors it is uh, dot product of these two so that becomes uh, 2i into i or i will i'll write like this 2i minus 3j plus 6k okay dot i cap dot i by root over a square root over uh, 4 plus 9 plus 36 into root over 1 right so that will give you numerator is 2 and the remaining terms will be 0 by denominator is 7 okay the value of alpha will be getting it as a 2 by 7 answer for that will be 2 by 7 understood everyone right next write the vector equation of the plane passing through the point a b c and parallel to the plane r bar dot i plus j plus k is equal to okay so see here this is in some format but i don't say this is a unit vector or maybe this is the perpendicular distance this is not unit vector if you want to find make it as unit vector you can divide with root over 1 plus 1 okay r bar dot 
i plus j plus k by root over a square plus b square plus c square plus root 3 that will be equal to 2 by root 3 so now you can say this is the normal vector and this is the perpendicular distance r bar dot n bar r bar dot r bar dot n cap is equal to d right the same thing here fine vector equation of a plane passing through a b c passing through means this is the point this is the point a b c right r bar equal to a bar plus lambda b bar that a b c and parallel to so for this plane this i j k is the normal but not but not i j k are not the drs of this plane i j k are the drs of the normal to the plane so think and try to do that think and do that people everyone do it fast All right, so we will try this question, try this question later, fine, everyone, okay, so we have one or two more questions, let's see what are those, uh, you can try that later, find the distance between the planes, okay, so you need to bring what are the normal vectors, okay, from there you can try to do that, find the vector equation of the plane which is at a distance of 5 units from the origin and to the normal of the plane, all right, people, so beautiful questions are there, few more as a homework so that you can try it later, fine, right, so, what we have discussed today in three-dimensional geometry, we started with the DCs, what are DCs, what are DRs, how to find DC, DRs, and different equations of lines, right, distance between Q lines, and equation of planes, and different applications on all those, okay, people. So, with that, we are going to conclude this chapter. So, in the coming chapter, we are going to discuss about uh, linear programming, right, the maximization, minimization. So, that's a, such a beautiful concept and very useful topic. In the coming next years, it means after your plus 12, wherever you go, right, if you have maths in your subject or any other uh, uh, coding, in the coding also, right, uh, so this, uh, maybe in business related subjects also, this programming, linear programming is very, very essential, so that we are going to discuss in the next class, okay, right, so thank you so much friends, stay tuned to get the next lecture, thank you.